I've started getting a lot of questions on science videos in the comments section, or recommendations rather, for various science video topics. A lot of them are small topics that don't quite have enough meat for their own video, so we're gonna group a bunch of them together today. Three in particular, I'm really excited. Hope you guys are as well, let's get into it. Normally you see players take one of two approaches whenever it comes to upgrading their mechs from Tech 2 to Tech 3. Either Control k the Tech 2 mechs and then reclaim the wreck and rebuild a Tech 3 mechs on top of the spot. Or you can just do a straight upgrade to Tech 3 with assistance from whatever engineers you have in the area. So are there any benefits to one strategy over the other? To test this, I set up an environment where I have enough energy and mass to complete the upgrade but no additional income is coming in. So we can calculate then the delta between the mass that we initially started with versus the mass that we finished with. I've also measured how long it takes for four Tech 3 engineers to assist with the upgrade of a Tech 2 to Tech 3 versus four Tech 3 engineers straight up rebuilding a, map, a mechs to, on the same spot. So first off with upgrading, it costs us about 4,478 mass and it takes about 24 seconds to do it. The delta between the cost of a Tech 3 Max at 4,600 mass and what it actually costs at 4,478 is due to the fact that during the upgrade, the Max is still actually producing plus nine mass. So you do get a little bit of a benefit there from the mass extractor continuing to produce mass. The numbers here aren't entirely adding up here. I'm gonna chalk that up to the fact that I'm not super fast on the stopwatch whenever it comes to pausing the mix after it's completed, um, but I'll leave a one to 2% margin for error here. And I still think that this gets us in the ballpark and is enough to show an advantage with one strategy versus the other. Now looking at control k and rebuilding a max, it costs us about 3,854 mass total. Again, plus minus one to 2% for margin of error. And it takes about 30 seconds to actually complete the whole operation whenever we start with the reclaim and going into the build. Now this of course, comes at the cost of some actions per minute, but you are rewarded with some pretty significant mass savings. So as far as which one should you do, it becomes down to an evaluation of, do you have the actions per minute to control K and then rebuild? Or are you somebody that just wants to click an upgrade and then go for it? It's no secret that as you move up the tech level list within Forge Alliance Forever, you're gonna be spending more mass for less damage per second. Units just become less damage per second efficient whenever we're evaluating them against mass. The reward that you get though is more consolidated damage per second in one particular area. This is true whenever we're looking at uh, tech three bots versus experimentals. Now our most efficient is tech one, and so this means that you should just stay at tech one, right? And while 500 tech one tanks, which is roughly the mass equivalent of a galactic colossus, can kill a GC, I think we can all agree that it isn't best to just spam T1 for a lot of reasons. Most importantly of which you will crash the game probably for a lot of people. My computer was chugging whenever I loaded 500 strikers into the match. Specifically for this topic, we're gonna to be looking at Percival's versus uh, Ethotas here. Now an Ethota costs 26,500 mass. The rough equivalent here is 21 Percivals. Now, there's a lot of variables that we need to take into account here other than just the fact that uh, 21 Percivals can kill an Ethota. Now the first one that we need to look at is time. Now this is probably the biggest one. With 10 engineers focusing on an Ethota, it takes about two minutes and 45 seconds to complete the build. With 10 engineers assisting a Tech 3 HQ, it takes about six minutes to build 21 Percivals. Now, in order to bring this delta into something a little bit more reasonable, we have to build an additional five Tech 3 land factories, which leads us to our next topic, which is overall mass investment. So at face value, it might seem more efficient to build Tech 3 bots, but in order to build enough bots in the same time frame that an Athota is going to be storming into your base, you will need to build five additional Tech 3 land factories, which costs an additional 7,000 mass. This drops our mass efficiency for the bots quite a bit if we're gonna try and maintain a reasonable timeline. Now the big point going in favor of Tech 3 bots is that your damage per second is less concentrated. So as units die, 
you don't have all of your eggs in one basket, you're still going to be cranking out damage per second. Now this can also be seen as a weakness depending on how you look at it. It can be really nice to have all your damage per second in one gigantic unit that has a ton of HP. And so all that being said, I can't tell you which one is better or worse because there are going to be different scenarios where each one is better. But that being said, it's very rare that going for a land experimental is a bad idea. So I would recommend going for Athotas and Galactic Colossus in probably nine situations out of 10 instead of going for uh, Percival's uh, or Bricks or Harbs or anything like that. Now, the last topic we're gonna be looking at today is going to be mass efficiency for cruisers versus land-based tactical missile defense. Now, we've seen this all over the place from my games, the Guile cast, to my casts, et cetera. Uh, how good is tactical missile defense against cruisers mass for mass? Now, cruisers ha are probably the weirdest unit within Forge Alliance Forever across the various factions. None of them have the same capabilities. Some of them have uh, flat cannons for AA, some have tactical missile launchers, some have deck guns, others don't, some have decorative deck guns. So it's a very rough comparison. Now I did a breakdown of every cruiser in a separate video and I'll link that one in the description if you're interested. So for this, but for this one, we're gonna be focusing on two factions, the UEF and the Seraphim because they have tactical missiles on their cruisers. The comparison here is pretty simple. Cruisers cost 2000 mass and tactical missile defense costs 280 mass. For the UEF cruiser, it takes roughly two tactical missile defense to defend against the missiles, costing 560 mass. And for Seraphim, it takes one tactical missile defense to take out all the missiles. Now, I'm using the uh, Buzzkill here. The Buzzkill is roughly the same as the Zapper as well as the Seraphim tactical missile defense. Volcanoes get a little bit different because they fire slower but have AoE. So whenever you're looking at the other three factions, you have a linear kind of progression as you add more tactical missile defense. With volcanoes, you get much more of a logarithmic progression where you can get to a point very quickly where a position is impregnable to tactical missiles if you've got seven or eight volcanoes that are in the mix. Whereas it's not true if you have buzz kills or zappers in there. Moral of the story here though, and whenever we take a step back, is that tactical missile defense will beat the tactical missile launchers from cruisers, mass for mass, 90% of the time. The problems arise whenever you have a ton of tactical missile defense in one spot, and then they end up targeting the same missile, and this actually lets things through. So you need to spread them out and stagger them. Having them in lines or in grids is no good, and you're gonna end up wasting shots uh, from the tactical missile defense. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the variety of the topics. I had quite a few stacked up in the comments, so I grabbed a couple of the more interesting ones for this video. Subscribe for more videos like this where I go in and break down the mass costs and values for various units, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.